Hey everyone, it's Daniel at Voicel here. In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to use the API step to get and retrieve information from a database. In this example, we're going to use Airtable. It's kind of like Google Sheets, except it's more powerful, it's free, and the APIs are way easier. And so here we've got our sample database in Airtable. So this is like an order table. So I've got a bunch of order numbers, the product they ordered, the customer, and then their shipping status. And my Voicel project, I want to be able to capture the order number and then look in my database and actually return the shipping status and the product name. And so to do that, we are gonna go ahead and go into VoiceFlow here and let's start building out a project. So welcome to VoiceFlow and we'll add another one. We're gonna snap it underneath here called, uh, please enter your order number. order number. So from there, we wanna actually capture the order number. And so what we're gonna do is go to listen and we're gonna use the capture step. So the capture step saves information into a variable. So there's two ways to do it. The first one is you capture the entire user reply to a variable. So whatever user types, it's saved into a variable. Or we can do another way, uh, which is we actually just wanna capture an order number. So if a user says my order number is one, two, three, we just wanna capture one, two, three. We don't care about the rest. So to do that, we're gonna use an entity. So if I go create a new entity here, we're gonna call this order number, and the type is gonna be number. So there's different things that you can do with an entity. An entity is basically a trained piece of information to look at a sentence and pick out a certain value. So for this one, we're gonna use number. It's just gonna look at a sentence and pick out the number, but you could do email, phone number, percentage, whatever it is. So go ahead and hit number here. And the pre-built ones are pre-built with a bunch of training data, but if you have a custom one, you can enter your own training data. So we'll do number, create entity, great. And so uh, if a user doesn't give us a number, we're just gonna create a reprompt here that says, what is your order number? And now let's move on to the next step. So the next thing we wanna do is we actually wanna go ahead and generate uh, the API step. So we're gonna take the API step out of the dev section and put it on the canvas. We're gonna connect them up here and I'm gonna give the title to get order info. And this one is gonna be welcome. So in this now, this is a full REST API within VoiceFlow. So this can get information from a service you're using that might be Airtable, it might be Salesforce, HubSpot, um, you know, any kind of service that you're, you're connecting to. You can also uh, do anything else. So put, post, uh, delete, patch. So this sends information to somewhere, this updates information, updates information, and this deletes information. So anything with, a, with an API, you can interact with VoiceFlow. So now for the get request, I wanna actually get information from my Airtable. So what I'm gonna do is in the uh, API documentation, which is under help, I've got it open here. I'm gonna go to list records. So this is an API call that can actually just list out all the records that I've got in my table. So we're gonna go ahead and copy the uh, URL here and you can see it's a get request. So in VoiceFlow now, pop that in here. And now I need to create a header and then some parameters. So for a header, it usually tells you what it is. So you can see H is header, so authorization. Um, so you don't need the colon, you just need authorization. And then you need to actually have your API key here. So I'll copy that, put it down here. Now I need my API key. So let's go ahead to uh, Airtable in, I think, Developer Hub. You can find your API key here. Let's grab that and toss it in this step. Perfect. So let's now just send a quick test to see if this actually works. Awesome. So you can see that it actually returned all of the orders that I've got. Um, which is perfect, so you can see order number 125 in Nintendo 64. So what we're gonna do now is we don't obviously want all of these, we actually just want the one that actually matches our order number. So we are going to use a function here called filter by formula. So you can see right under list records, um, obviously this is a known thing. So they've got a parameter called filter by formula. And this just lets you say like, okay, what field do you want to have certain value? It'll just return that. So in VoiceFlow, we're gonna go filter by formula. And what we're gonna do is we want, what is this, order number? So we're gonna have order number equal uh, the information we just captured. So order number equals, and we'll pass in the actual order number itself. So order number. Um, because it's a number, I don't have to put any quotations. If it was a string, so for example, email, I would have to wrap this in quotes. So let's just test this out and do order number one, two, three. Awesome. And you can see that it just returned one record and that record is uh, the order number one, two, three, which is a PS5. So now what I wanna do is I wanna save some information. So I wanna save the status and I probably wanna save the customer email uh, and maybe the product as well. So let's just save 
status and product for this example. So to do that, um, I want to remember some of these items. So this might be good to write down or just note somewhere. So within records, I've got fields, and then within fields, I've got status. So I want to indicate this to the system. So one other thing to note is that this entire response is also saved in a variable called response. So our documentation explains this as well, but now what I want to do, go to capture response. So I'm going to type in response because I want to reference the actual API call itself. Then I'm going to go and say response, uh, and then I'm going to do records, records. And because there's multiple records, because it's a list, I'm going to just say zero, which indicates that it's the first record, fields, and then I believe it was status. So let's just quickly just test this again. Records, fields, status. Perfect. So that should save the, um, the shipping status to a variable. So I'm going to say the variable is called shipping status. Great variable. So this should save it. Let's just go ahead and do a quick test before we go further in this. So I'll just create a uh, reference to shipping variable here. So shipping status. You'll see that it's grayed out, which means that this text step is just going to respond with whatever the value of the shipping status is. So maybe we'll put some text here to say, um, oops, your item is, and then shipping status. Great. So let's run this test. So let's say order number uh, one, two, three. And this is a great note here. So whenever you create an entity in your project or an intent, you want to train your assistant because this is going to tell the AI model to actually train um, based on all the information that you gave it. So it usually takes a couple seconds, but let's just wait uh, until it's done. So let's just restart this test quickly, run assistant, and we're going to go welcome to voice flow, order numbers one, two, three. Oh, so let's see what went wrong here. So I've got the order number successfully. So it's an API call triggered successfully. So this knows this lets us know that the API call didn't have any issues. And then order number is zero. So this means that it didn't actually save the shipping status. So the reason I was able to find that out is you can see that on the left hand side here, there is a little nub you can pull out. This tells you all the variables in your project. And then on the top here, under settings, you can turn on debug mode and intent confidence that show you what's going on behind the scenes. So let's go ahead and figure out why this isn't saved. So if I go ahead and just test this out, it looks like oh, status actually has a capital. And so this is case sensitive. So let's try this now. All right, again, one, two, three. Awesome. So now we're good to go. Your item is shipped. And if I pull out this little tab on the side, you can see that the shipping status is shipped. So. Great example of how you can debug your project in voice flow. Um, so let's kind of continue on here. So I want to add in the other item as well. So not just the status, but I also want to add in um, the product name. So let's just do this again. Let's see what this is called. It's called product. So instead of status, it's going to be product. And we're going to save this to product name. Perfect. And now we're going to go ahead and say your product name is shipped. So we're going to shipping status uh, is pending. Sweet. So that's part one of actually getting information uh, from Airtable and putting into voice flow. So next part now is we're going to actually send information back. So we're going to give the customer the option to actually add a note to their order. So let's go ahead and go pretty much to the same pattern here. So we're going to say, do you want to add a note? Add a note to the order. If so, um, let's give them the option to add some buttons here. So we're going to say yes, or we're going to say no. Then we are going to um, present some options. So for the yes path, we're going to say, great, what's the order? What's the note? Awesome. What is the note? Now we're going to use the capture step again, but this time, because we want to capture the whole sentence, we're just going to keep it like this. So entire user apply. And we're actually going to create a new variable here, and we're going to call it, oops, oops. So to create a new variable, you just want to remove this, and you're going to say um, order note, order comment. Perfect. So now it's going to save the entire reply, or whatever user types, to the order comment. And now, again, we want to use the API step. We're going to make another API call here, uh, and we are just going to, this time we're going to make a post request. 
So post request, and let's look back at the docs. So in the Airtable API docs, we are going to update or insert a record. And so for this, uh, actually it looks like we need to use a patch request, and here is the URL. So invoice flow, let's update this to a patch request. We're gonna put in the URL. Looks like it might be the same header. Um, so let's just go back to our other API step here and just copy over our key. And it looked like there was one more header here. So the header is content type, and then it's gonna be application JSON. So let's just copy this full thing here. Full content type, oops, application JSON. Okay, awesome. Um, and so now looking at the docs, I don't need to add anything else. I just need to add in the actual field information. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy, and you wanna make sure you copy right from data, but a body, and we want the body to be raw because that way we can just copy what Airtable has. So let's get rid of the quotes here. And for the fields, uh, we actually don't want this. We want, uh, what is the field that we want to update? So the field is going to be called comments. So this is the field name, we're just gonna copy it, go back to voice flow. And instead of all of these ones, we're just gonna have comment. And the comment is going to be exactly what we captured. So we called it order comment. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do the bracket, order underscore comment. So this is now gonna reference the variable that I've got in voice flow. So let's just quickly test this out um, and see if this works. So I need the field ID. So let's just grab this, one, two, three, perfect ID here. And let's test out this call. Record ID and the order comment is gonna be test. Perfect, so it looks like it was successful. It says that it added under the comment section, it's called test, let's check here. Perfect, awesome. So we're now, we've now built the flow successfully to do this. Let's test this all out together and see if this works. And if it's successful, we're gonna say, great, um, your comment uh, has been added uh, to our database. One quick note here, I just realized that um, this is actually the incorrect ID. So if I go one, two, three, you'll see that it's just response.records.id. So I can remove field here. And now this should work. Great, let's test it out. Please enter your order number, one, two, three. Do you want to add a note? Your PS5 is shipped and I can see that my record ID is saved. So let's add a note. And let's say my shipping address has changed to 123 Lawson Lane. Okay, perfect. So API call triggered successfully. Let's go ahead and check our database. You can see that the comment here has been updated to my address has been changed. And we now have functional bot. So this is now something that we can add to our website. We can integrate with our own assistant, um, if it's a retail bot or anything else. And you start imagining how you can use this in different ways. So Instead of Airtable, you could use something like Salesforce, like HubSpot, um, anything else to just replace some of these functions. And so that way you can start interacting with any additional service outside of VoiceFlow. If you have any questions, feel free to just hit up our support chat, reach out to our Discord community, uh, or, you know, worst case scenario, ask ChatGPT um, to see if it can help debug your API call. Um, but that's it. Uh, good luck building, and we'll see you next time.